How to find wholesale deals for free with Zillow Fizbos. Guys, it's Rick Gannett. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find these leads. I'm gonna show you what to look for and how to identify them. And most importantly, how to make a simple offer so you get started in your wholesaling journey. But before I do that, do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button so other people can find the truth about wholesaling. So wholesaling in Zillow Fizbos, honestly, it is a great fit. I don't care if you're experienced or you're just starting out. This this is a great place to find leads. Let me give you this one disclosure. You are going to need a massive amount of quantity. I'm not even going to hide this from you. You can't do stew five or 10 leads and expect to get a deal out of it. The easiest way to attack this is set a daily goal and make offers, make phone calls, make contacts, FISBOs, and consistently do it five to six days a week. For those of you that are over enthusiastic, seven days is no problem. Remember, you've got to commit 24 months to your wholesaling journey. Volume and consistency is the key to getting wholesale deals through Zillow Fizbos. I always say, Rick, how do I start this? Real simple. Number one, pick your market. If you're doing it locally, you can pick your local farm dairy. If you're doing it virtually, you've already have a market established. Rule number one, I want you to Google and find out what the average median price for that market. So if the average median price is for your market, make sure you stay below that. That is the key. You do not want to be chasing down properties where there is little to no demand on the wholesale side. Remember, higher price properties tend to go with realtors. They don't use wholesalers. So don't waste your time and energy calling on leads above the medium price. Actually, I would stay probably about 10% or lower below it. That's rule number one. The next two pieces of key information is going to make a difference of seeking people that need to sell their house versus people that want. See, a lot of you call on the freshest listings on Zillow. And I'm here to tell you, those are the worst ones to call. These people usually have dream prices and they're like, hey, you're the first person to call me and they're not going to budge on the price, I want you to avoid these people. What we're really trying to seek out is motivated sellers. And here's the two big filters that will lead you with people that might cut you a deal and you can cut through all the, the dream wishes that want like the super high price. Here's how you do it. Number one, I want you to sort from the oldest to the newest on the listings that are 100 days plus. That's right. What does 100 days plus mean? It means they either have it overpriced or there's a problem with the property. The market speaks volume and we have to understand that. Number two, I want you to look for any type of listing that has at least one price cut, preferably two. Price cuts show that they're a little bit more motivated and they're willing to negotiate to get their property sold. You see, these two criteria is going to lead you more to a full sell deal through Zillow as opposed to fresh listings, which honestly is like banging your head against the wall. Use these two criteria and you will seek out the proper wholesale deals on your Zillow Fizbos. So now we're going to get into reaching out to the owners. And this is where most of you freak out and you need to calm down. Number one, you have got to consistently reach out to these leads and make offers. If you don't make offers, you have no opportunity and you can't get a wholesale deal. The entire goal of doing the Zillow Fizbos with wholesaling is to get volume. The only way to get volume is you consistently call on a daily basis. Honestly, five, six, seven days a week, set a number. I don't care if it's 20, 30, 40, or 50. Remember, the more you do, the more opportunities you'll have. Now, by using those two criteria to sort the people that are going to have a little bit more challenge properties, Properties. The next thing we talked about is reaching out to them. And I'll say there's simple five step process when you reach out to anybody on a Zillow foot, FISBO, get over yourself, get uncomfortable, make these phone calls. Here's how we start out. Number one, simply ask them if they are the owner of the property. Obviously, you want to make sure you talk to the owner of the property so you don't waste time. Sometimes people's kids answer the phone. Sometimes somebody else answers the phone. If you're not talking to the owner, you're not going to get a deal done. On them. So that's question number one. It's an easy softball question. Why not do it? Make sure you're smiling when you're dialing. It makes a huge difference. So going to step number two, it's kind of a setup question and you have to understand it. Remember, you're not calling on fresh listings. You're looking at properties 100 days plus on the market and simply ask, has anything changed since you listed the property back, you know, 100 or 120 days ago? It is a setup question. The idea is like, what has changed? Sometimes these properties are vacant. Sometimes they're not taking care of the lawn. And the idea is really open up a conversation with your seller to get into the weeds of what's going on with the property. And remember, your job is to get the seller talking. The more they talk, the more information you can decipher and you can build rapport. This is a great open-ended question. Get them talking. This is the key to step number two. Now, at this point, they're going to ask, who are you? And just say, listen, hey, my name is Rick. Me and my partner are looking to buy more houses in the area. Be cash. We drove by your house, thought it was a good fit, and then get into it. Can you tell me a little bit more about the house? So that's our step number three question. You want to get them talking. So you're basically balling it back to them. We go, tell me a little bit more about the house. Remember, the idea 
is to get them talking, to get them really into the weeds of the house. They're going to tell you what's right with the house. They're not going to right off the bat tell you what's wrong with it. And that's okay. Because number four is going to be what we call the gut check question. And this is where we've already framed it. We've set it up. Now you're kind of going in for, you're going in for the kill on this. And let me show you how this works. You ready? Step number four. Mr. Seller, why do you think the property hasn't sold yet? I want you to use that same mannerism, that same like kind of high pitched voice. And what you do is try to take that uncomfortable feeling and almost take it off the seller and then have them respond to you. At this point, they usually don't know how to respond to this question. Like, what do you mean by that? I go, well, you know, most properties sell pretty quickly on the open market. I see yours been on hundred days. What do you think's tying it up? And you are going to put them in a defensive position. And honestly, you already know it's probably overpriced or the property needs tons of rehab, AKA it needs a wholesaler like you to fix the problem. The bottom line is by asking this question, you, you set up the classic urgency situation, whereas basically, do you want to sell the property or you just want to keep riding it on the market. Remember, your job is to not run them under the bus. You've already framed it. You've hit them with the gut check question. So now hopefully they're going to give you the truth about the property. And this is where you, the wholesaler, formulate the problem to help fix their issues. You want to create a solution. Remember, the more problems you solve, the more money you make in wholesaling. This is no different. So the final step is people say, listen, how much do I offer? And this is where we're going to simplify it. If you want to learn more about the process, I'm about to teach you, go over to freefullselling.com. But I'm going to teach you a simple method called go for no. What do I mean by this? You want your first offer to be rejected. That's how you find the seller's bottom line. Most wholesalers chase people down and try to figure out what's the most they can offer them so they get a yes. That's how realtors say, if you want to be a wholesaler, you're going to have the opposite. It's going to make you uncomfortable. You're like, Rick, how much do I offer? Real simple. The most you can offer for these properties is 70% of what they have it listed for. And remember, what they have it listed for is kind of meaningless. So we're purposely skill and lowball. And remember, that's the most I want you to pay. So if it's offered at 200, you can offer 50, 60% of that value. You're never going to go above 70% because guys, you have to buy a property. You already know the property has challenges. You already know it's overpriced. So you have to ask for these deep discounts because you are probably going to get a couple of those. And I'm going to teach you how to counter back how to do it. But once you have a low price, it is much easier to sell these properties to your cash buyer. Do the hard work up front so you have an easy path to sell your contracts to cash buyers. Guys, the truth of the matter is once these properties are on the market for three, four months, sometimes six months, the market is has this amazing ability to tell people the truth. The market is factual and it is data-driven. And most of these sellers don't like it because they take their egocentric values they put on these properties, they don't do the repairs, and then when reality hits them, it hurts. What happens is time and circumstances can change any seller's mind. If it's still on the market, it means they probably have the motivation to sell it. At this point, I'm looking for what I call seller fatigue. And what I mean by that on a Zillow FISBO, after three or four months, if the seller would accept the reality, they got to get it sold and they're most likely going to have to work with a wholesaler that can provide cash, take on the current properties of the problem, the current problems of the property and just get it sold. You have to hunt for the seller fatigue. This is the point where they say, listen, I just want to get it sold at this point. I want to move on with my life. I've accepted the reality. I want to work with you. But you have to go through steps one through five to get to this process. Nobody just rolls over and gives you the cheapest price and a two minute conversation. Remember, me and Zach always teach you, your job as a wholesaler is to help the seller get out of their own way. The problem with most Zillow Fizbos is they think they know it all. They dictate a price that's usually overpriced. They don't want to do repairs. And as the market speaks to them over three, four, six months, reality hits them. Once they hit seller fatigue and you are trained to help craft a solution to fix the seller's problem, this is how great wholesale deals are created through Zillow Fizbos. Guys, don't overlook it. Remember, the keys to this is you have to have a massive amount of quantity and you have to consistently attack it. Set a daily goal, 20, 30 calls a day, and just keep it going. So if you did that seven days a week, that's over 200 contacts a week. With this type of training at prewholesaling.com and your consistency and your discipline, Zillow Fizbos is an excellent way to get started in wholesaling and get your first deal. Guys, if you want to learn more how to do this, go over to prewholesaling.com. And as usual, if you got value from this video, do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button so other people can find out the truth about wholesale. This is Rick Ginn. I'll see you in the next video.